have you been? I know, right? It's been... What has it been? Almost two weeks since I've actually had a movie review of any kind or any kind of video content up on this channel. Look guys, I really have to apologize for that. The past couple of weeks have just, they've flown by and they've been so incredibly busy. I do have reactions of the movies I'm going to be talking today on the Stardust app. There's a link to go check those out. But guys, I am so happy to be back. School has been crazy. Projects and everything aside, I'm so excited. But I didn't want to do individual reviews of the movies that I've seen because that would take up so much time. It would be a lot of videos. So I thought I would make kind of quicker, quickie reviews for you guys right here, right now. I have two videos for quickie reviews coming out. I have this one and then I'll have another one coming out later today. So two videos one day with a whole bunch of reviews. I believe we got eight reviews to go over. So let's get started. And just as a side note, Zach Pope, please don't kill me. So guys, I want to save my special rating system for when I, uh, I'm i focusing on a specific movie for these. I think I'm going to do like I've been doing with books and, and television shows and video games and I'm going to be doing letter grades. So without any further ado, let's get started. And the first film we've got to talk about is A Beautiful Boy. A Beautiful Boy is about a father and son played by Steve Carell and Timothy Chalamet who both have a have a little bit of a history when it comes to drug abuse and substance abuse and we get wrapped up in a truly emotional journey that left me speechless and left me on the floor essentially. I loved A Beautiful Boy. This is one of my favorite movies of the entire year and it's not just from the performances. Although I do think Timothy Chalamet should win Best Supporting Actor at the Oscars this year. It's the emotion behind it. It's how this whole script was focused. A film about characters with flaws is the greatest kind of film that you can have because every character should have a flaw when it comes to filmmaking. And these characters do. This whole film is about the flaw of humanity. It's about the flaw of these two individual characters. I thoroughly loved it. And I think if you guys get the chance, you should check it out. But you need to be prepared because it's a very dark, a very heavy movie. But it is great. So for a beautiful boy, I'm going to give it an A-. Next up, we got Jonah Hill's directorial debut with mid-90s. I really enjoyed this film. I didn't love it as much as the 90% of the population, mostly because I thought it was a little too short. I wanted this film to be longer, and I feel as though because of that little circumstance, it kind of made everything else feel a bit choppy, choppier than it should have been, but I appreciate the filmmaking nonetheless. I love the film grain that you see on screen, and if you don't know what film grain is, have you ever watched a movie from the older days, like pre-1990s, where you saw little scratches or dots appear on screen? That's kind of what film grain is. And I mean, the film was, it looked like it came out in the 90s, and the overall aesthetic of the film was very pleasing. Everybody did a pretty good job, considering that a good portion of the cast are not actors, but they were people that Jonah Hill pulled across from the street, and he's like, hey, I want you to come and be in my movie. That was all really cool. So at all of this, Despite all the choppiness, I really enjoyed mid-90s. I can't wait to see what Jonah Hill does next, and I'm going to give mid-90s a B. All right, all right. The next film we're going to be talking about is a sequel to a film I didn't really enjoy that much. That's a sequel to David Fincher's interpretation of The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo, and that is The Girl in the Spider's Web, directed by Fede Alvarez. Now, for your guys' information, I'm a giant Fede Alvarez fan. I love his interpretation of The Evil Dead. The, I love the remake. I also thoroughly enjoyed Don't Breathe. I think Fede Alvarez is just such a great director when it comes to horror, when it comes to suspense. And although the direction, in my opinion, is the best part of this movie by far, this film has a lot of issues. And the main issue is that it's just so boring. Very much like my issues with... David Fincher's Girl with the Dragon Tattoo, there were so many subplots and so many issues inside of this film that it just drug the, it dragged the movie down for me and it made everything just look like a boiling hot mess. The benefits or the, the pros of this film is definitely Claire Foy as Liz Salander. I believe that's the character's name. Like I said, I don't know that much about the Girl with the Dragon Tattoo series, the books, the original the the original films all i know is what i can partially remember from david fincher's interpretation but claire foy was excellent in here also there were many action sequences in here like 
her going across an iced over lake on the motorcycle. That was really exciting. And the cinematography was very beautiful across the board. But this movie, I can't necessarily recommend anybody go see it. Although if you're a, dry, a girl with a dragon tattoo fan, you're probably going to. And if you're a Fede Alvarez fan, you're probably going to. But after all this is said and done, I'm going to give the girl with the dragon tattoo a C. We got to talk about one of my all-time least favorite films of this entire year, and it's The Nutcracker and The Four Rounds, or I think that's what the name of it is. This film I was extremely excited for. I was excited for it, but the movie is a mess. First of all, let's talk about the performances. The performances across the board, ex except for the main girl, I can't think of her name off the top of my head. Guys, I'm tired. Do you realize I have been up since 2 o'clock this morning? I am, I'm exhausted. I can't remember her name. Uh, Mackenzie Davis, is that her name? I, I don't know. Uh, but the main actress in here, she does have a future ahead of her because by far she's the best part of this movie. Her performance is one that I latched onto and I thought it was great. But Kiera Knightley, Helen Mirren, everybody else in this film just felt cartoonish. They felt over the top. They... <sighs> I understand that this movie is made for kids, but honestly, I think that kids deserve better. Even if you look at a film like Tim Burton's Alice in Wonderland, you know, that's not a film I wouldn't necessarily was made for kids. Kids enjoyed it. My niece enjoyed it. And I enjoyed it. But that's because it also had a lot of heart, too. Nutcracker and The Legend of the Four Realms are whatever the heck this thing is called, it doesn't have any heart to it. I felt, I, oh, guys, no joke, towards the last half of this movie, I dozed off for probably a 10 minute period, and the only reason why I woke up is because one of my good friends tapped me on the shoulder to wake me up. This film was boring, it was choppy, it was a mess overall, the cinematography was... Honestly, it looked like an old video game. I did not like this movie whatsoever. And guys, I hate to say it. I'm going to give The Nutcracker and The Four Rounds a D-. minus. Alright everybody, that is my first round of reviews coming to you. Like I said, it's a bit different format. These are quick reviews, my quick thoughts of the movies. Because I have seen a lot of movies and I have not even had a chance to get solid reviews for you guys. And I apologize for that. School, work, side projects, all of this stuff is just so, so crazy. But I appreciate you guys nonetheless. Thank you so much for showing up. And stay tuned. Like I said, later on today, I will have another one of these quickie review segments up for you guys. And I, I, I can't deny, I'm super excited for you guys to see that as well. But as always, thank you so much for everything that you guys do. Thank you for the support. Thank you for everything. It means so much to me. And I wish I could repay you all and visit you all in some way. I just wish I had the finances. But you guys are all amazing. You all are fantastic. And I hope you all have a fantastic day.